Okay, hey, welcome everybody. So welcome to the first uh, video lecture for Econ 104, Principles of Macroeconomics. Uh, as you saw on the intro card just a short while ago, in this lecture, we'll be learning about what is economics. So <laughs> what are we all here to learn? Uh, what's an economic system? What do economic systems do? What do the words capitalism and socialism mean? Boy, those words sure get thrown around a lot. Uh, surprise, surprise, they actually mean something. Uh, we'll talk about what, what, what that is. And then finally, we'll talk about some basic concepts associated with economic growth. Uh, and uh, uh, well, we're just gonna introduce you to the idea of economics and, and, and maybe it'll get you a little more excited about, about uh, this class and uh, uh, economics in general. So, you know, the economy is something that, that we create because we need to. We, uh, you know, we live in a material world. We have material needs as human beings. We need food, clothing, shelter, okay, at a minimum. And if we're to, you know, enjoy our lives, uh, we maybe need a little more than, than that too, okay. So economics is the study of how we go about doing this. You know, how do we go about providing the food, clothing and, shel clothing and shelter and other things that we would like to have uh, as a society? Uh, economy is that process, how we as a society choose to go about doing that. Now, if you're getting the idea that I'm implying that, that economy is something that we, cr we create and that we can change at will, you get, you're on the right track. Economy is not like the weather. So the weather is rather poor outside today. Uh, there's nothing that, that I can do about it or, or really anybody else can do about it. Uh, it's northern Wisconsin, it's winter, the weather's going to be poor. But the economy is not that way, you see. The economy can be made stronger, we can be made we can become, choose to become wealthier, or we can, of course, choose the opposite. Now, you might be inclined to say, well, if it's, if, it's, if it's so easy to make an economy say good, why is the economy sometimes bad? Well, understanding this is much like understanding <laughs> uh, um, physical health. Okay? So, for example, I can know that I could be a little healthier by perhaps exercising more and maybe eating a little less and eating more healthy. I know this is a fact. However, for reasons that are complicated, I and others often choose to not act upon what we know to be true. Okay. So it is with the economy. To solve, say, a recession is fairly well known. Economists understand how to do it, and you will learn by the end of this class how to do it as well. But of course, it requires political and individual realities that oftentimes we are simply not willing to act upon, just like diet and exercise. Okay? So please keep that in mind as we work through this. Economy is something we make, like law or morals, customs, so on and so forth. And indeed, those other laws, customs, norms, so on and so forth, are shape this thing we call the economy. Right? It is a thing we made. So that's, that's me and my daughter some years ago, I think three years ago, now out in front of Centennial Hall on campus. Um, there's a lot of scooters and squirrels in these presentations, as well as guitars and things like that, because that's the stuff I like. So <laughs> um, that's what goes into these presentations. Moving on to the topic of economies. All economies have to answer the, these basic questions. What to produce, how to produce, and for whom to produce. To understand this, think about you know, a camping trip. You and your friends go on a camping trip you know, out in the woods somewhere, and you have to determine, well, what are we gonna do? Are we gonna make a fire? Are we gonna pitch the tent? Are we gonna you know, maybe make a trail somewhere? Are we gonna go hiking? What are we gonna do? What are we going to produce? It's a question that you're going to ask in combination with your friends, and you're going to come up with some solutions. That is the beginnings of economy. 
economics, then, of course, is the study of, of how we go about making those decisions. Okay, How to produce. Let's go back to the camping trip. If we make the campfire, are we going to use wood from the surrounding area? Did we bring wood with us? How are we going to light the fire? Are we going to get two sticks and rub them together? Or do we have a lighter? If we have the lighter, where did we get it from? <laughs> okay, so economic questions. For whom to produce? Well, when we cook the you know food that we're eventually going to have to eat, or we pitch the tent, who gets the first spot in the tent? Who gets the first item of food? And why? Is it the one who's the hungriest? Is it the one who complains the loudest? Is it the one who pays the most? Or it is a combination thereof? Okay. These are the basic questions of economy. All economies have to answer them, whether it's the United States in 2020 or 2021. <laughs> it's 2020 right now, but it'll be 2021 when you're seeing this. United States in 2021, or you and your friends when you go on a camping trip. <clears throat> okay. The way in which we answer these questions makes up our economy. So we'll create ideas about how things should be done. And we might we might decide, well, you know, how are we going to produce, say, health care? Are we going to produce health care for only people who can pay? Are we going to produce health care for the people who need it? Are we going to produce health care for the young because they're new to life? Are we going to produce health care for the old because they've you know, been around and taken care of all the rest of us when we were younger. Okay, we're going to create a bunch of norms and understandings about how we should live as a society, and those are going to impact how we organize the economy. And they're also going to impact really fundamental ideas about 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 how society is organized. Who is able to own things? When are we able to transfer ownership? By what right do I own this clothing? Is there any limitation to that right? What if I didn't do any work, but I simply inherited the right to all the clothing? Would that be legitimate ownership? Would it be legitimate property? All of you watching this are gonna have different answers to these questions, and all those answers are legitimate as well. Okay. How we, the conflict, <laughs> the conflict about, about how we answer those questions is of course politics right? Um, and is that political process that determines how the economy is organized? Okay. Now, of course, over time, we're going to change our attitudes about things. You know, 100 years ago, we thought, well, you know, it's okay if kids work in the factories. <laughs> it's, it's okay if, uh, you know, women don't get to decide uh, about our elected leadership. It's, you know, if we go back 200 years ago, it's okay if some people own other people and then force them to do work, and we call that part of the economy. Well, things that are considered appropriate at one time become inappropriate over time. And sometimes things that are considered inappropriate become appropriate. And as a consequence of this, the form of the economy changes. It always has been changing. It will always change. 20 years from now, the organization of the economy will be different than it is today, just as it was different 20 years ago, much more so 100 years ago. Okay, just a quick history of the organization of economy that we have today, where, where we mostly buy and sell things in markets, is, is relatively new. For most of human history, the form of economy is sort of what we call traditional economic systems. And those economic forms of economic organization answer those economic conditions, or excuse me, economic questions with the answer of tradition. So for whom shall we produce? How shall we produce? What shall we produce? Well, what have we traditionally produced? How have we traditionally produced it? And for whom did we traditionally produce it? This might seem very strange until one realizes that, of course, there's still aspects of our economy that are organized this way today. When we ask who will shovel a driveway when it snows, do we ask, well, whomever will request the least amount of money? Or do we say, well, you know, dad always shovels a driveway, so that's who's going to shovel it. Okay. Or 
you know, when 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 we open presents on 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 a on, to celebrate a birthday or a holiday, who opens the presents first? Is it a is there an auction, or is it a tradition? Who carves the turkey <laughs> on Thanksgiving? Is there a market or is it a tradition? Uh, okay. See. So with this slide, I want to talk a little bit about economic systems. <clears throat> and, you know, our purpose here is not to study economic history. I just want to touch on each of these quickly. Uh, we've talked a little bit about traditional economies or traditional organization of economy already. Um, so we'll move off that. Of course, for a, a significant period of human history, uh, significant components or aspects of economy uh, were, 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 were based upon the uh, uh, institution of slavery, where of course you know some people found it acceptable to own other people and then require them to do work on their behalf um, <clears throat> you know and that was the basis of, of how you get stuff produced and for whom we produce and so on and so forth uh, fortunately these these are, are near extinct at this point um, and uh, uh, becoming more uncommonplace uh, moving on to the Third one there, feudalism. Feudalism, of course, uh, existed in, in uh, the Far East as well as in Europe for, for several hundred years. And it's a system of economic organization based upon social inferiors and uh, superiors, where superiors uh, simply decide what, what shall be done for their inferiors. So, of course, starting from the king, moving down to uh, lesser royals, uh, moving to the priesthood, moving to the military, uh, and then to the business classes, and then so on, to down to the serf classes of society, uh, which each, with each segment of society uh, sort of determining uh, economic outcomes for the classes below them. But for the most part, feudalism is, is an item of the past. Today we have um, mostly socialism, capitalism, and really variants thereof. Okay. I'm going to talk about capitalism a little more detailed on the next slide. So for now, I just want to devote my space to socialism. Uh, socialism is a system where uh, goods and services are exchanged and produced, um, but that uh, you know, generally speaking, what are called the means of production, or you know, essentially the factories and, and businesses and everything like that, are are owned by the government, right, or or by some central authority. So. The economic questions, what to produce, how to produce, so on and so forth, these three economic questions we talk about are answered by society in general, right? So, um, of course, there are aspects of, of socialism that, that exist in our, in our, you know, what we generally refer to as capitalist economy, police production, the military, K through 12 education, roads, um, you know, we, we, we generally don't, the market doesn't decide where our roads are going to get built, by and large. It's, it's communities and societies that decide where and when roads get built. It's not markets that determine, you know, who's going to get military protection, something we decide upon as a society, what the level of military protection is, so on and so forth. Okay, so this is a socialist organization of the economy. When we talk about capitalism, uh, what we mean is an economy that's organized primarily through markets based upon private ownership. Okay, that's what that word means. Okay, so I'll say it again. A system of economy that is answering those three economic questions, what to produce, how to produce, for whom to produce, through a system of markets. So, who shall produce? Or sorry, what shall we produce? What the market says we should produce. So in other words, what people are willing and able to buy. How should we produce it? Well, the market will force lower costs onto firms. Lower cost firms will be able to effectively compete. And so the market will decide how it will be produced. For whom shall we produce? Well, who is willing and able to pay shall receive. Now, the operation of individual markets is the focus of microeconomics, which is Econ 103. Some of you may have already taken it. If you haven't, it's okay. It won't damage you in this class in any way, shape, or form. Okay. Now, as I mentioned, you know, most economic activity in the United States is organized through markets, which is why many times people refer to our economic system as a capitalist system. And this is not incorrect, right? This is this is essentially a fair characterization of the U.S. economy, but of course it's not a perfect characterization. I just mentioned some aspects of our economy are organized along traditional lines, and of course some some of of aspects of our economy are not organized in markets. You know, you're attending public education right now. This is provided by the state of Wisconsin, in part. Okay, uh, we drive on roads that are 
provided by the state. There's no, there's no, when you hop in your car and, and drive to the grocery store, there's, there's no, there's no market to get there, right? You don't, you don't, you know, pay a toll uh, as you leave your driveway uh, to get, or as you get onto any of the significant roads here in the Eau Claire area. Um, <clears throat> And so really our economic system is best characterized as a mixed market. That is to say, most of the economic activity occurs in markets, but, but not all of it. <laughs> There's some other more extreme examples here on the slide. <clears throat> okay, so mixed market system, right? You could read the slide here. Pause the, if you need to. Okay. I hope you're getting the impression that from these slides that, that, it, that again, this thing called economy, we're making it every day. Right, we're changing it. We're making it our own. We're making it what we want it to be. Um, and if you're thinking right now, well, what isn't what I want to be? Well, <laughs> are you working on it? <laughs> um, because if you didn't know you can remake economy, guess what? Somebody else is going to choose for you. Just like if you didn't know you could choose what kind of cookies you bought, well, somebody else is going to get the cookies for you. <laughs> Okay, so I talked about microeconomics briefly a moment ago. Let's talk about macroeconomics, which is this course. Now, macroeconomics can be broken down into four areas, uh, each of which we'll study in some depth. First is economic growth. Second is business cycles. Third is unemployment. Fourth is inflation and deflation. Brief explanations of each are below. Uh, we will cover each of these in much greater depth, so please know that this is just the introduction. And so I, I think I, I think actually I'm going to cut this video here, and then we're going to talk about uh, uh, some basic problems of economic growth or basic issues sorts of economic growth in part two of this video. So uh, we'll see you there in a little while. Okay.